Welcome everyone. I'm getting ready to move and there are divots in my carpets from furniture that in many cases has been there for over a decade. So we're going to look at four different methods to try to remove some of those indentations, those divots from the carpets. Welcome everyone, I'm Mark. This is the Average Me channel. Before you do anything, if you have not yet subscribed, please click my face in the corner to subscribe and don't forget to ring the bell icon, that way you'll know when I post new videos. I am leaving Wisconsin. Why? Let me show you. I'm just getting a little tired of all of this stuff. I'll be moving to a place just a little bit warmer, Florida. But before I do, I've got to sell this house. And you can't sell a house unless it's in good condition. And let's take a look at my carpets. I'm going to use four different strategies to try to remove the divots from the carpet. First, let's see what a divot is. So this is what I mean by a divot. These places where furniture has been and the carpet is just flattened down. So we're gonna see if we can't make it look just a little better. Now I've already tried to raise it through um, taking the metal end of the vacuum cleaner and kind of trying to get it up a little bit. And that helped, but we still have some of these divots from furniture. Here's another one down here. So there are four things I'm going to try. The first is my carpet rake. Boy, do I love this. I did a video on it. I will link it here. I have a friend that's helping us get the house ready. And he was amazed. He said, you know, Mark, your carpet rake makes the carpet look like new and it does for you know a lot of the house it's, it's pretty amazing before i have a showing i rake all the carpets and then you can find out exactly where people went in the house just by following their footprints in the carpeting it's like tracking a cat in the snow uh, but sometimes this isn't enough for those deep deep divots so this is the first thing that i tried and it took care of a lot of them here's some areas where you can see people walked. What I'm gonna do is take the rake to these areas and this usually works really, really nice. It doesn't take much pressure at all. But you can see just raking it brings up that pile and makes it all go in the same direction. So a lot of the house, that's the way I prepare before I bring people in. And it looks pretty nice. I'll finish up and show you the end result. And there you go. You can see raking alone is very, very nice if you don't have really deep divots. Here it is from the other direction. But the carpet we're looking at here is, I think it's called a Berber, and it's really tightly woven and it just doesn't have a lot to fluff up. So we're going to use a couple of different strategies. The first one that I've read is to put an ice cube and let it melt and sometimes just let that stay there like overnight and that water gets into the fibers and you can fluff it up and dry it out. So we're gonna give that a try. The second thing we're going to try is a more immediate type of strategy where you actually take a misting bottle or some water and a hair dryer and you try to add the water, dry it out more quickly and fluff it up with your fingers. And the third thing that I may or may not try, I'm not sure I'm gonna do this last one, is to take an iron and don't iron directly on the carpet because you don't wanna burn it, but uh, lay down an old cloth, an old towel and moisten the spot, iron it, and then try to work it up with your fingers. So they all kind of use the same strategy. Get it wet, let that dry, and see if it can help revitalize the carpet. Let's get started. Okay, we're gonna tackle this one first with the ice cube method. We're gonna put the ice cube there, let it melt overnight, and then we'll attack it in the morning. Now here's a large flat area that the rake helped a little bit. It really should be going this way. You can see, even now I'm getting it to go a little better. But I have an idea. First I'm going to rake it a little more 
and show you the results and then I'm going to get my carpet spot cleaner and see if the agitation motion brings that pile up a little bit. The rake did help some, but let's see if we can bring it up even more. Now, by the way, some of this right there is much deeper. So I might not get rid of that this first time around, but I'm going for the big flat surface. Now this is a big area, so even the spot cleaner may not do it. And even if it does, I'd have to do about 10 rounds in different spots, but let's give it a try. And while that's doing its job, I'll tell you I didn't put any chemicals in there, just warm water. We'll see if that brings it up a little bit. Okay, it's telling me it's ready. And let's see if we can, boy there's still a lot of moisture in this. We might have to let that dry out. I'm going to work it with the rake again a little bit now that it's wet and we will see what happens. Well, it certainly seems better, especially compared to the flattened fibers around it. I raked it up a little bit. We'll let it dry and come back and revisit it in the morning. Here's a little different kind of carpet. You can see we got a really deep divot here. A very heavy bed was here. So we're going to try the ice cube overnight on a different type of carpet. So on this one, it's pretty deep. I'm going to try the hair dryer and spoon method. I'm going to get it moist with a damp cloth. And then as I dry it with the hair dryer, I'm going to work the fibers up. And I'm going to use a spoon to do that as it dries. Well, it's certainly better. Now we're going to try the iron method. So I'm going to take this wet cloth and we'll place it over the divot. This makes me so nervous. You can see the steam rising up. I'm not seeing a significant difference. It's a little something here. Little bit of a difference. There's some similar indentations there. But certainly not getting rid of them. And once again, you know, I can feel the backing and the padding are depressed in there. We'll give it one more go around. Well, I think that might be the best we're going to do. Give it some time and see if it rebounds a little bit. So those are the three spots. One, two, this is the one I was working on. I'm going to try to rake them and see if it makes a difference. It's not bad. Once again, it's a little softer, but I wouldn't say that the indentation was removed. Here's a problem as I see it. It's not just the fibers of the carpet that flattened out. It's also the backing of the carpet and the padding underneath. And until that padding has a chance to kind of respond or relax and after 10 or 12 years of having, you know, hundreds of pounds of bed laying in one spot. It may never bounce back completely, but we'll let it relax and we'll come back tomorrow morning and see what happens. We'll also look at that ice cube. So here's the first one where we put the initial ice cube and it melted, dried, but the nap really didn't come up and pulling it with my nails trying to pull it up I don't see that it has 
much impact at all on that divot. Here's why I ran the machine. This fared a lot better. Um, you can see that this pile is still higher here, but you can see this has raised, I don't know how well it's showing in video, that has raised significantly more than the area surrounding it. I know you're probably not seeing that very well, but you can see just a little bit darker right there, and that's where the machine was. So I would say, given the time, if you have an area that's not really a deep divot but flattened out, one of those machines is probably going to help raise that pile a little bit. Here is the other ice cube spot. It's a little damp yet. I think perhaps the nap raised a little bit, but the deep indentation is still there. It has softened. It's not that harsh uh, line that we were seeing when we initially started. Um, maybe if I worked it back and forth a little bit, we could get the nap up. But the thing is, I can feel that just the backing and the padding is depressed and recessed there. So until that's able to rebound, I don't know if we're going to be able to get rid of that divot. And here's the one that we worked at with the spoon yesterday. And this one seemed to fare the best. It was also not uh, as deep as the rest. This one is very similar to the ice cube site. It's looking pretty good too. It doesn't have that really deep, deep divot. Um, this is one that I also just got wet and worked at with the spoon. Now, this probably doesn't look quite as bad. I have more direct light. Uh, the one at the ice cube was more at an angle, so the shadow probably made it look like a deeper divot. But this actually doesn't look too bad. So my conclusion, if it's just the nap that's flattened, probably the best way to get that up is by using a mechanical method. We did get it wet, but we worked at it with a spoon, or we had the brushes on our vacuum machine working at it. That's probably going to do the best job. Laying an ice cube on it in and of itself really didn't do anything. Also, if the carpet backing or the padding is flattened out, you can work that nap for a long, long time and it's only going to do so much to raise the divot. So, I think the upshot is the better the carpet and especially the better the padding, the less likely you are to see permanent divots. If you have cheaper backing, cheaper padding, and thinner padding, you're probably going to see those divots, if not for a long, long time, perhaps forever. Now, I hope you enjoyed this experiment in removing carpet divots. As always, I encourage you to like and share the videos. Leave your comments down below. If you haven't already, please subscribe by clicking my face in the corner, and don't forget to ring that bell icon. That way you'll know when I post new videos. Thanks for watching, I'm Mark, and this is The Average Me Channel.